So in this video, I'd like to introduce you to De Moivre's theorem, which actually I've uh, proved already uh, back in the proof by induction section. It's uh, quite a good proof by induction to do. So um, I'm going to introduce you to where uh, the idea is going to come from. I'm not going to prove it again. Uh, you can go back and see that proof um, in section A. Um, but I'm, that proof only worked for positive uh, integer values of n, uh, and I'm going to prove it for negative integer values of n. Okay? So, let's rewind, okay? And let's go back to thinking about, if I've got two complex numbers, so z1 and z2, and I've written them in modulus argument form, we saw that if you multiplied... Uh, z1 by z2, that would be the same as multiplying the two uh, modulus, okay, r1, r2, and you add the arguments. So you get cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus i sine of theta1 plus theta2. Okay, so that's what we have already seen in this section. Now, if um, we'd actually done z1 times z1, so z1 squared, okay, then the idea would then be that having done z1 times z1, I would have r1 times r1, which would be r1 squared, and you'd have cosine of theta1 plus theta1, which is cosine of 2 theta1. And you'd have theta 1 plus theta 1 here, so I sine of 2 theta 1. Okay? So, what this is showing is that if you've got... Um, now, I'll, I'll ignore the R for the time being, okay? So let's just imagine that R is 1, okay? If you've got uh, cosine of theta plus I sine theta, and you square it, then what you get is this. You get cosine of 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. OK? So that is a direct result from what we've seen by multiplying complex numbers together when they're in modulus argument form. Now, De Moivre's theorem goes one step further. De Moivre's theorem says that... Um, Actually, if you have cosine theta plus i sine theta to the n, then cosine, that is cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Okay? And I've proved that for all positive values of n, positive integer values of n, okay, using proof by induction. So that's proved back in section A, okay? So, it would be nice if we could also work with negative values of n, okay? And that's what I'm going to prove here. So, let's say that let n equal minus p, where p is a positive integer, okay? So, that would mean that we would have cosine theta plus i sine theta uh, to the n is now cosine theta plus i sine theta to the minus p, OK? So I've replaced the n with minus p. Now, that is the same as 1 over cosine theta plus i sine theta to the p, OK? But remember, p is a positive integer, and I've proved uh, this for positive values, positive integer values of n. So that means I'm perfectly at liberty to bring that p down and write that as cosine of p theta plus i sine of p theta, because here p, remember, is a positive integer. So that's perfectly valid. Now, if you multiply this top and bottom... So just as we would have done by multiplying top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator,
like so, okay? Well, your numerator is just going to be cosine p theta, take away i sine of p theta. In the denominator, you're going to get cosine p theta times cosine p theta. So cosine squared of p theta. The middle terms are going to cancel. And you're going to get the i sine p theta times minus i sine p theta, which is plus sine squared p theta. So in the denominator, you've got sine squared plus cosine squared, which of course is 1. So this is cosine of p theta take away i sine of p theta. Okay? Now, remember, n was equal to minus p. So p is equal to minus n. So if I swap back in, I've now got minus n theta, take away i sine of minus n theta. But cosine is an even function, so cosine of minus n theta is the same thing as cosine of n theta. And sine is an odd function. Okay, So that minus sine can come out and multiply with that minus sign, and you'll get plus i sine of n theta. And so, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta to the n is the same as cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta, where n is a negative integer. And so, the Moivre's theorem here is true for all integers n. OK? So, with that then in mind, OK, we now have a theorem that will allow us to simplify things a great deal, OK? And we're going to be working with the Moivre's theorem in this set of videos.